India European Union resumed free trade talks after nearly a decade freeze. Two sides now hoping to overcome sticking points as they aim to reduce China reliance. India and the European Union have now formally relaunched the negotiation, negotiation for a free trade agreement, ending a hiatus of nearly a decade, now aiming to strike a deal by the end of 2023. Sasan, ji, you have been the leading diplomat of the country. How do you see this negotiation between India and European Union, which is sort of very, very important trading partner for India? Uh, Sanjay, you have given very specifically the reason for it. Both India and the European Union want to reduce their dependence on trade with China. As you know that the trade with China is extremely important for both. And now with the evolving situation where we are finding that China is using the muscle flexing in the region and using all kinds of other initiatives like Belt and Road Initiative and others to make its outreaches towards other countries and other regions. European Union would like very much that we should be able to uh, China in this regard to the extent possible. And this is a welcome opportunity for India and I think very timely initiative that we have decided to restart and relaunch the uh, trade facilitation talks with European Union. We should be, of course, aware of the background as to uh, the reason why this, these talks had to be abandoned at a time when the European Union wanted very much to increase trade with China and India was also increasing its policies in the East Asian region with the ASEAN countries, Australia, Japan, etc. So the priorities were different at that time. But now time has come, keeping in mind the geostrategic, geoeconomic situation at present, that we must increase our uh, mutual trade and add to the present uh, large figures already, which are there over 150. And they using very healthy 30-40%. So I think we have every possibility to increase it further. Commencement of talks on India-EU FTA is happening at a very right time. So FTA with EU is a long overdue. We started talking to this 27 nation bloc almost 15 years back. But the talks was stalled in 2013 as both the countries failed to reach agreement on many key issues including custom duties on automobile and states movement of professionals that was the, one of the most you know the big challenging area between two sides generally india's sort of european union views that india's restrictive trade policy and regulatory framework have come up as hurdles related to matters such as foreign direct investment greenhouse gas emissions nuclear energy farming subsidies regulations of the financial sector tariff and non-tariff barriers and technology transfer. But this time we see that the both sides have come together and they're quite open to discuss every thorny issue. How hopeful are you? Well, one has to remain optimistic and especially as you we started by saying that the geostrategic and geoeconomic situation right now, EU and India, to trade and economic relationship. Therefore, it's obligating both sides to make another effort at it. And even if we get 10%, 15% additionality, I think that will at least give the advantages to both economies, which is very necessary. I think we have to also know the background that in India, you know, we thought that WTO would be the best platform where we should conduct trade negotiations on a universal basis. And at that time, we had found that there were a lot of restrictions still on and obligations required on the developing countries like India, because we have remained right from our independence, food deficit country very much concerned about the food security for our people. Whereas in WTO, we always found that they were more interested in making sure that there are no food subsidies or no subsidies of any kind given in the developing countries. We had started paying more attention to developing our trade relations with the neighboring countries, uh, whether SARC or ASEAN and BIMSTEC. And on the East Asia, we wanted to set up the regional trading and economic Lines. I think now the situation is totally different. We realize that we have reached a kind of a plateau on the other side, and we tried the relationship with UAE and Australia, which has proved to be very successful. And I am sure that if we conduct these negotiations in the right spirit, EU, of course, has the difficulty that they have to negotiate among themselves also to find out as to what agreements are reached that is acceptable to each 
EU partners. So that, of course, creates a problem. But we can keep in mind that the major countries like France and Germany, they have very large within. We can firstly take into account their concerns and see that we bring them on board and then we try to take into account the uh, issues of importance to other countries in the European Union. So I think this remains a new where India one side we to make sure that all of state the progress they at least 20 times more complex for the new year with so many countries and so many stakeholders on the side. You know, despite the optimism, we see a real challenges of, you know, arriving at a free trade agreement between two sides. There are some specific sectors like dairy, textiles, beverage and automobiles where we face problems from both sides. Now, the import duties for the products from are quite relatively high. The reduction of the import tariff is considered to affect these sectors to a large extent in the domestic market. On the other hand, the European Union has imposed a ban on almost 700 drugs clinically tested by Indian drug companies. Simultaneously, there are many barriers for the movement of professionals due to cumbersome rules on work permits, visa restrictions, and non-recognition of professional qualification by the European Union. Obviously, India wants this harmonized and easy access to these routes. But there is a significant untapped potential which we can hope to unleash. So, with these sort of three, four, you know, challenging areas, you know, there is a strong bond between two sides. You think there could be that we will be talking more about product, you know, the trade between two sides. India is, it is in the favor of India. How do you see you know, moving forward, like the services could be talk, uh, put it in back burner and we can just talk about at the moment the product exports. Well, there's no doubt that the Indian market is that an India advantage of its large consumer base in order to negotiate agreements with other countries. And European Union is also looking eagerly to enter this large consumer based market in India. We have to make sure that because, you know, for example, if you see the RCEP with the East Asian countries, it collapsed on two grounds mainly. One was all the agricultural commodities because we felt that the agricultural products and the dairy products from Australia, New Zealand, and other so they uh, entered the Indian market and our farmers will suffer very badly. Therefore, that issue will always remain among us because farming lobby is extremely important in India and no government can try to overlook that. The other part is that, yes, the pharmaceutical Area is where Indian companies have made the maximum gains in the world markets. And also India has gained a tremendous amount of goodwill by preparing generics for very expensive medicines, and especially for the pandemics and epidemics in Africa, Latin America, and many other regions. And they have that has been very successful. So India would be very keen to see that if these generics can get market access into European Union also, that would be of great advantage because Europe have very high health standards, so they remain worried whether the Indian medicines would have the required quality or not. If you remember that recently we had this issue that while India is developing the uh, against COVID with the British company, but the Indian products, Indian people were not allowed to enter with co-vaccine co-vaccin, vaccination into England because it was felt that they were perhaps not of the right quality. Till we reached the stage where our foreign minister had to impose reciprocal restrictions on the Britishers coming to India. So I think that remains an issue that the European negotiators have to put that mindset that anything produced by India will be of low quality. I think that they have to put it behind them and make sure that what we are looking at is to find that while equitable and equal standards are kept up in both sides, but both sides have to gain from the negotiations which have been launched at the highest level where the Prime Minister has spoken to the President of the European Union, our Trade Minister has also spoken to the uh, Trade Head of the European Union. So I think right now it's a, the process which has restarted after a long hiatus by policy directive from the highest levels in the two parts or the two partners. So I think we need to move ahead and once again explore very seriously as to how we can take advantage of the possibilities that exist and the potential that exists between our two sides. Thank you so much for your time, Ambassador Sasan. Thank you very much. I agree with you totally. Thank you. Thank you.